Hello everyone. So uh, my company's name is Finica Analytics. Uh, it is a machine learning firm based in US. Uh, it's headquartered in Boston. We have offices in London and Mumbai, which is where we are sitting right now. Uh, so what Spinnaker Analytics does is it helps companies solve business problems, and we use emerging technologies like machine learning, artificial intelligence, predictive analytics in order to solve those uh, solve those problems for different companies. Uh, we work with variety of companies. We work with financial services companies like banks, insurance companies, credit credit lending companies, asset management companies, and so on. We also work with non financial services companies like even e com firms, uh, retail firms, and so on. Um, primarily, we uh, deal uh, we we help companies use or leverage uh, artificial intelligence, predictive analytics. And we identified that there is a when we are looking for talent uh, in order to work with us. So we generally hire data scientists in our companies. And uh, what we've typically seen is that uh, there's a big shortage of data scientists in the current market. And whenever we were interviewing uh, students for uh, for these positions, the positions would stay open for a long time. And hence, a uh, few months back, we uh, we launched uh, Boston Institute of Analytics in India. In US, we were always training uh, other uh, corporate entities on machine learning and artificial intelligence through corporate partnerships. But in India, we, we were not operating that, where we were not operating Boston Institute. And uh, a few months back, we started that. And uh, Boston Institute of Analytics is a classroom focused training program for students, working professionals who want to study analytics, who want to study machine learning and artificial intelligence. So I joined this field of analytics uh, over uh, you know twelve years back. Uh, before you know I graduated from IIT Bombay, uh, and after that I was trying different sectors. So I, I tried manufacturing, tried to work in manufacturing. I tried to work in IT, uh, traditional software. I tried to work into financial services. I, I was uh, doing these free internships everywhere just to understand every sector, understand the problems that companies are mostly focusing on. And then eventually I joined uh, Spinnick Analytics, uh, you know, uh, about 12 years back. And the reason I think, you know, I, I immediately decided to go for Spinnick Analytics was primarily because of the problems they were solving and uh, the tools that they were using. The, two, the emerging tools of machine learning, predictive analytics, AI, they were, of course, the, they were buzzwords then, they are buzzwords now. But more than that, the very... Uh, concept that you want to use data, you want to recognize patterns in historical data in order to solve the problems. That really motivated me to uh, join Spinnaker Analytics. And then, uh, you know, uh, when we were, uh, you know, as I, as I mentioned earlier, the, the concept of Boston Institute of Analytics came in because of the gap that we saw in the market when we are trying to hire data scientists and not being able to find the right ones. A lot of people claim to be data scientists, uh, to be very frank, but uh, they, in terms of skill sets, uh, they, they are just not there. And I sometimes feel it's not students' pro uh, students' fault. It is really a systemic problem where machine learning, predictive analytics, these th subjects are not taught even in the best of the uni universities today in India. And students are left to themselves to figure these uh, skill sets out. They are left to themselves to learn these uh, subjects. And that's where the gap gets created. That's the primary reason why the you know, the graduating students of our country are not employable. They, uh, the, the kind of curriculum that universities are teaching, they are still, you know, they, they've been teaching the same curriculum for a long time. The pattern in which they teach is very academic, it's very theoretical, it's not project driven. And those were some of the things that bothered us uh, and eventually led us to start Boston Institute of Analytics where we said that, hey, you know, uh, a very systematic approach to training students in these emerging technologies is, is required in the market today. And we have to uh, train these students using a project-based approach, not a theoretical approach. So uh, that's why even at uh, BIA, we, each lecture is a project. So when, when students come in, even on the first day, they, they would start off with a project. And then they would, con uh, they would learn the concepts that would help them solve those uh, projects. So it's a very different uh, approach that we follow. But really to be, to summarize, I think uh, with Boston Institute of Analytics, the primary motivation was the gap in the market that we noticed. And we, you know, we kind of felt very uh, sincerely uh, that uh, this gap has to be filled if India was to come on a world stage in terms of providing the right skill set uh, people 
to uh, to handle uh, predictive analytics and artificial intelligence and uh, all the emerging uh, technologies like blockchain and uh, different things. So some of the initial uh, issues that we faced when we launched Austin Institute of Analytics were more uh, related to, uh, you know, telling students, informing students the need about it and the need to take it seriously. A lot of students in India are very job uh, focused. So they would do something only if it issues them of a job. While analytics is widely regarded as the, as the field which has the most amount of jobs, which has the most amount of highly paid jobs uh, today uh, in the world. But uh, it cannot, even then, I think the, the main issue is that people focus more on whether they would be able to get a job rather than focusing on I want to get trained in the sector and the job will come today or tomorrow anyway. So I think some of those uh, issues is what we faced uh, initially when we would meet students, when we would counsel them and we would tell them about the new project driven approach, great project driven training approach that we follow at uh, BIA. So that was that was the one uh, major uh, kind of uh, uh, educational uh, constraint that we felt regarding, uh, uh, regarding uh, BIA. The other constraint was uh, of course uh, you know, the online channel of, uh, of uh, education. While I, I'm a big fan of online uh, channels, uh, online uh, media uh, of uh, education, and uh, uh, you know, those are really required. Uh, but uh, often what people think is that those kind of uh, online uh, websites that train students are, instead of using it as an augmented tool, they think that doing that itself is going to be sufficient. And that's where I think some of the gap is. When a student is completely new to a sector, I think it is important for them to follow a systematic approach, a classroom-based approach, where they actually get get into a class along with the peers, they interact with the instructor on a, uh, you know, on a regular basis, ask their doubts, and that kind of uh, almost a group learning goes a long way in uh, in teaching them the basic concepts, fundamentals of that subject. And then once they get trained at certain, at a certain level, at a certain basic level, after that they can take things in their own hands and get uh, trained or upskill themselves as required using online channels, using books and you know different media. But a uh, systematic classroom based approach is, is a critical requirement and those, that was another challenge that we faced when people compared Boston Institute of Analytics offering with uh, some of the online uh, offerings. And while comparison is fair, I think it depends on what stage the student himself is in terms of uh, his own data science uh, journey. So uh, data analytics is uh, you know, at a broad level. It is nothing but just analysis of data to solve business problems. Now, while data analytics or analytics has become a buzzword in the last uh, decade, uh, it's not that analysis was not happening earlier. You know, earlier it was called statistical modeling, statistical analysis. Uh, it's just that the field in itself has grown such a you know to such an extent that uh, analytics is now considered a sector of its own, and hence we hear more about that in uh, recent times. But uh, at a broad level, analytics is nothing but analyzing data in order to solve for a certain business constraint, a certain business objective that a company might uh, want to solve for. Different companies have different problems. So, so uh, you know, a certain company might want to focus their sales. A uh, company might want to focus their expenses. A company might want to uh, identify patterns among customer behavior. Different things. A uh, e-commerce company might want to find out which products are more likely to succeed when introduced on the website. So each company might be focused on a different problem. Any data analysis that we do in order to so create a solution for that problem would be part of analytics. Machine learning is when we do this data analysis and we, you know, any kind of prediction algorithm, prediction equation, equation that we create, that becomes adaptive to recent data points, that is machine learning. So let's say we are trying to forecast the sales. Now, if we start taking the newer data set and we start uh, identifying newer patterns, a different set of patterns than what we used to see earlier, and if, the, uh, if our tool, if our forecasting tool is able to make those adjustments and incorporate them in the future forecast, it becomes a machine learning module. Now there are different libraries, different modules that one can use in the whatever platform, whatever tool they are using in order to do the analysis. So it, that is not the important bit. The important bit is more about understanding the high level concept of what 
really analytics is, what really machine learning is, how uh, how a certain equation can be transformed into a machine learning equation by using certain techniques that would eventually make the uh, equation, make the model more adaptive to the recent data points to newer data points. So that's that's really at a high level what uh, machine learning and analytics is. So data science and analytics in general, I think uh, they are extremely important in today's day and uh, age. More importantly because no matter what sector or what field the company belongs to, they have to uh, adopt these uh, these uh, techniques, these uh, uh, methodologies. Now why is that? Uh, the primary reason is that most companies are today collecting huge amount of data for their customers, you know, about their customers, about their transactions, about uh, selling points, you know, about the business in general. And this was not the case say, 20 years back. 20 years back, you know, the things were, you know, extremely manual. Only the um, only very advanced companies would de deploy systems in order to capture data. But uh, since the IT revolution, most companies have started setting up their own CRM systems, ERP systems, and different kinds of systems within the organizations in order to capture customer-specific, sales-specific uh, information. And what the companies have now realized is the, uh, is, is the business can be made far more efficient if they look into this historical set of data and identify patterns and then make future decisions. So that's that has been the reason why uh, the field of data science and analytics in general has uh, has uh, kind of grown to you know, and is growing at a, at a scale that it is growing today. This is uh, you know and, and, and to summarize, it's just that it is sector agnostic. So in no matter what sector the company belongs to, they are using data today in order to make future decisions, and hence the the relevance of data science and analytics in general. In India, there are huge opportunities. We, you know, we, uh, as compared to the Western economies, we have a huge cost advantage in terms of uh, providing the right skill set people uh, at a, you know at a at a right cost. So, and, and thankfully, because of the STEM focused uh, science and technology focus in uh, our education system, we tend to uh, you know produce really good uh, good uh, students, good graduates that. You know, can be trained. So while while the bulk of them are unemployable, but when trained in the right fashion, they can uh, really power the uh, workforce. Like it happened uh, in the last two decades, uh, where Indian workforce is the is is, uh, uh, is the primary workforce in uh, in in, a, in software industry, in IT industry in general. So in India, the scope is huge. Uh, serving not just Indian clients but also the Western clients. We have the right set of uh, right pool of students who can be trained in uh, these technologies. So the response has been uh, phenomenal. The initial days when we launched VIA and we uh, kind of redesigned or we, we rather redesigned the the way the teaching and training will happen. Uh, we faced certain uh, constraints at that time where students uh, were not used to this project based uh, training approach but uh, you know it, it picked up really well uh, students realized the importance of uh, how uh, instead of uh, you know following a theoretical uh, studying approach if we if they focus on the project driven approach the kind of learning is uh, that they get is faster and they expose themselves to different industry problems. They really start thinking from a business uh, perspective and they learn concepts in that manner. And that helps them retain those concepts, retain those uh, uh, techniques uh, much better when they are uh, studying those. So that uh, the response uh, lately has been fantastic. Uh, we have a lot of students who are coming in and uh, we are often happy to even counsel students uh, you know, on what kind of analytics uh, uh, companies they should apply to, what kind of uh, uh, roles they can and they should go for. So we, we are happy doing all of those, you know, almost acting as a friend to uh, to students uh, and working professionals who want to enter this space. We have seen a lot of students who are confused. In fact, some of my own uh, close friends, they, uh, they were confused. They did not know how to enter the space of analytics. They all knew, they, they, have, they had heard about the space, they had heard about all these terms, all these buzzwords, artificial intelligence, blockchain, machine learning, analytics, but they did not know how to go about it. How do they really get a job here? How do they prepare themselves to make themselves eligible for uh, applying uh, in a job here? So I think, uh, you know, the approach that we are following is really appealing to students. They are finding it very useful. 
uh, the counseling sessions that we are taking. So we, you know, we, we think uh, it's going great now. Um, okay, so my favorite entrepreneur, uh, I think, has to be uh, Steve Jobs. Of course, you know, I don't need to give a reason, but uh, if I were to say why, I think uh, that is, uh, that's because of a couple of different uh, reasons. One is uh, primarily being the kind of commitment that he showed to whatever he did, whether it was in the initial days when he was launching Apple, uh, when he was doing Next, when he was working as part of Pixar. Uh, and transforming them and coming back to Apple, launching iPhone, all of those things. I think the sheer commitment and the sheer uh, uh, farsightedness that he had, the way he was thinking about business, how what products need to be launched, what uh, do customers really need, and uh, you know, uh, I, th I think that was just phenomenal. I think you have to be blessed in order to uh, have that kind of uh, uh, mind that can read people's wants and people's needs and the way to, uh, of course, uh, you know, captivate them, them in a way that uh, when uh, Steve Jobs would talk about his products, the passion would, uh, would almost uh, spill over to their audience, uh, to his audience, and uh, they would feel almost like uh, it's, their, it's their own uh, product. So I think that is uh, one reason why I like uh, Steve Jobs. And second is uh, the sheer design brilliance, brilliance that he had. I think design in today's world is it's extremely critical and uh, you know that that is the second reason why i like uh, steve jobs um so my advice to entrepreneurs and uh, road tractors would be to focus on learning you know i think uh, we often uh, try to jump into uh, creating a product uh, or joining a job without really thinking or making ourselves ready for it. And I think my advice has always been uh, to focus more on the learning uh, aspect. That, uh, hey, you know, what are the skills that are going to be required today? What are the skills that are going to be required in five years time? Why don't we start preparing ourselves for that? Even when you are an entrepreneur, uh, rather than creating me too products, where, uh, you know, we're just building and creating copies of uh, Western products or, you know, uh, US startups here, I think, a lot of uh, that can uh, be channeled in uh, in a better way. A lot of energy can be channeled in a better way, where we actually create a product that are more relevant for uh, Indian ecosystem. And uh, even if we are creating a product similar to what exists in U.S. markets, I think we have to customize it uh, to a very uh, you know different level. So that's uh, that's one advice that I would have uh, for entrepreneurs, for root tractors, I think, uh, and uh, for uh, people who want uh, who, who are not, not entrepreneurs who you know want to join a, a workforce i think for them I, my my advice would be to focus on learning you know to develop those skill sets that are really uh, important in today's uh, corporate world and that and analytics is one of them no surprise there you know analytics has been a buzzword for the last 12, five to seven years uh, the highest paid jobs are here and we at bia are doing our best to let students know about the importance of getting into analytics sector, about uh, training themselves, skilling themselves in this uh, field. We are also doing, uh, especially for road tractors, I think this, there's a great opportunity. We are giving a 100% scholarship for uh, interested road tractor students. Uh, so, you know, for every batch of BIA, there will be one student who can avail the 100% uh, scholarship. So, uh, you know, if, uh, if I was a road tractor, I would uh, you know, definitely go for it. There can be nothing, you know, uh, that's uh, better that, that can be better than this. Uh, you know, getting into the field of analytics the right way, the right, you know, systematic way by training uh, themselves or via industry projects. I think uh, that's uh, one thing that I would uh, really expect uh, Road Tractors to uh, go for. So thank you very much, uh, Road Track, for inviting me uh, to this and giving me the opportunity to talk to fellow Road Tracks. Uh, I hope uh, this was helpful and this can inspire some of uh, some of you guys to, uh, you know, become entrepreneurs or uh, even uh, get trained in this uh, new emerging technologies and uh, make yourself ready for uh, jobs of the future. Thank you.